Uh, okay, yeah, so uh, hi everyone. Hi everyone. Today I'll be talking about uh, basically how Claring Corpora document annotation. And uh, to give a bit of a background, uh, basically in the context of our resource uh, families initiative, we've been conducting uh, periodic re reviews of the provision of metadata for basically those resources and tools that are included in our overviews. Now, in the case of language corpora, we've been doing this for three very basic mat uh, uh, categories, this being size, annotation, and license. Now, in a review from 2020, when there were around 560 corpora uh, overviewed in the Clarion resource families, it was the case that the provision of size and license was quite good. Should I, should I put it more down? I guess. Um, in that around 90% of the corpora had this information, but by contrast, metadata on, it, on annotation was missing for a significantly larger percentage of the corpora. That is for almost a quarter of them. Now, when we conducted these uh, reviews, what counted for a metadata to be considered as included is just about any mention of it anywhere in the repository entry. So either in the form of a dedicated SIMD component or as part or somewhere in the so-called free text description or even in those description texts that are added to the deposited data. But for this review, uh, what I wanted to see is basically how annotation is documented in SIMD components that are specifically dedicated to that. Uh, now, uh, I'll give a very brief introduction to SIMD. This acronym stands for Component Metadata uh, Infrastructure infrastructure and it's basically clarion solution for metadata modeling. Uh, two of its main advantages are uh, uh, interoperability as well as reusability, but both of which are basically very crucial for this sort of very hetero hetero heterogeneous metadata landscape of uh, distributed infrastructure such as clarion. Now structurally, a metadata record that uses SIMD is comprised of metadata components, which are in turn comprised of things like metadata elements, metadata attributes, or possibly even other embedded components. Now, the SIMD profiles which underlie the metadata records are stored in Clarion's component registry. And what's also important is that a repository's adoption of SIMD is actually a requirement for it getting B-Center certification. Uh, now, uh, on this next slide, I have an example of what a metadata component uh, for annotation looks like in the component registry. As you can see, a constituent element of this uh, annotation info component is the uh, annotation type element. Uh, this element in turn sp uh, spec uh, is in turn specified by a value which runs the gamut of several annotation types, like part of speech tagging, alignment, limitization, and so on. This element is also furnished with a concept link, uh, which facilitates interoperability in case of different semantics or different terminology when differently named elements basically refer to the same thing. Uh, now, this component is from the resource info profile, uh, which I'll be returning uh, to as I go along with my presentation. Uh, now, what I did for this presentation is I've surveyed how the Corpora of Clarion resource families avail themselves of SIMD annotation components. Uh, this survey was carried out on uh, at the end of April this year, uh, when there were almost 700 uh, corpora overviewed uh, in our families. Now, what's important is that for 62% of them, we know that they are annotated in one way or another. And what I did was I basically looked at all the metadata re records of these corpora and tried to see whether the annotation is documented in SIMD components or somewhere else. Now, on the next slide, I have the findings. Uh, it actually turns out that only about a third of the around 400 corpora uh, use SIMD components to document annotation, while the rest of them document annotation elsewhere, usually as part of the free text description. Now, second, the most frequently used profile is Lindat Clarin, which accounts for almost a third of the records of the annotated corpora. Uh, however, even though Lindat Clarin is the most common profile, and even though it defines uh, a SIMD component for annotation, there's actually only one corpus that avails itself of this component, and I'll return to this corpus in a bit. Now, the inclusion rates of the other most widely used profiles are actually much better by comparison. For instance, almost half of the corpora whose metadata records use the resource info profile um, document and, uh, their annotation in uh, SIMD. The, the best rate is for the media corpus profile, which is actually used solely by the corpora of the Bavarian Archive for Sp 
speech signals. Uh, this is important because one of my main points would be that there's this strong connection between repositories, or rather repository types, uh, and the rate at which dedicated SIMD components are used for annotation. Now, lastly, there are also some profiles used by annotated corporate that do not define SIMD components for annotation, and one example is the data profile. Uh, uh, now, I'd like to now focus on the Linded Clarion Corpora uh, uh, for a bit. As I said before, there's only one corpus that makes use of this profile sole annotation corp uh, component, and this is the Danish reference corpus. As you can see, this annotation component used by this corpus per pertains to general annotation information, and the annotation element is used recursively to define all the four annotation layers, these being tokenization, segmentation, part of speech tagging, and lemmatization. Uh, now, the rest of the Linda Clarion corporate define annotation uh, uh, elsewhere. I have an example here from the uh, CC Gigafida corpus, which is actually the publicly available subpart of our Slovenian uh, reference corpus. And as, you, and as you can see here, in this case, the annotation is documented as part of the free text description in the bolded part, which, said, which concretely here says that XML, the XML file has part of speech tags or other morphosyntactic descriptions, which are in Slovenian only while the vertical file has tags both in English and in Slovenian. Uh, now, turning to other metadata profiles, I'd like to begin with a very brief comparison. Um, while the Linda Clarion profile defines only one component and only one element uh, annotation, other profiles define, define many more of them. For, for instance, the re resource info profile defines around 10 components and more than 20 embedded elements. Now, uh, on this slide, I have an example of part of the metadata uh, record for the Portuguese parliamentary corpus, which uses the resource info profile. Concretely, the metadata record employs three components for annotation here. The first is the basic info component, which defines the annotation type, so in this case, morphosyntactic tagging, as well as other relevant aspects of annotation, like segmentation level, the tag set, the language of the tags, and the annotation mode. Now, there's another component that dedicated to the annotation document, which is a manual uh, in this case, and there's yet another component for the annotation tools, which are here defined as the ch uh, uh, chunk annotator Yamcha and the MBT tagger. The record, and the record also defines the size of the SARP corpus that is annotated this way. Uh, now, uh, what's in first important is that there's a strong tendency that corpora using the Linda Clarion profile document annotation less comprehensively than corpora using uh, other profiles. Here, here I'd also like to point out two problems of using the free text description for such documentation. Basically, on the one hand, whenever annotation is documented in such a way, what's usually mentioned is only the annotation type and rarely any other subcomponents of the annotation process such as the tool or text set. Yet, on the other hand, since the free text description is unstructured in comparison to the SIMD components, the types of information presented there are often a bit arbitrary in the sense that what's described and what's NEFT, it seems as though it's left a bit to the whims of the depositor. Uh, and another thing to mention is that there are a lot of corporate that define aspects of annotation as part of basically arbitrary components that have nothing to do with annotation specifically. So one thing that you see often is, is that you have things like annotation mode, such as manually annotated, uh, mentioned only as a keyword. Uh, now here I'd like to discuss the link between uh, the use of SIMD profiles and the Clarion repositories. What's definitely uh, the case is that certain SIMD profiles are characteristic of very specific repositories. So basically the Linda Clarion profile is used solely by repositories that employ the Clarion DSpace architecture, and DSpace-based repositories are actually the most common in Clarion. For instance, DSpace underlies the repositories of the Slovenian consortium, uh, the Czech one, the Icelandic uh, one, many of the Nordic and Baltic ones, perhaps most of them, and so on. And by contrast, the, the MD record cor uh, corpus profile is used by the C Greek Clarion repository, while the resource info profile is used by the Finnish and the Portuguese repositories. What is crucial is that these latter repositories are either based or use the meta-share system rather than DSpace. Now, uh, 
the main difference between the two architectures is that the resource entries of this space do not provide a separate field to which annotation SIMD components can be mapped. And this is in contrast to metadata such as size, um, license, authorship, resource type, and so on. Uh, this DSpace approach of skipping over annotation is actually architecturally reflected in the VLO, where it is possible to search for resources by things like modality, keywords, resource type, but not, uh, but not annotation type. Uh, now, obviously, this presents a bit of a problem of recall if the user is, interest, is interested uh, in a sub-process of annotation specifically. And it is the, the case that many external users of Clarin are interested in specifically that. Um, by contrast, Met MetaShare repositories um, present a complex field which allows depositors to define annotation in a highly structured and recursive manner, basically for each type and modality separately. Um, so, uh, here uh, I'd like to conclude with basically the proposal, which basically boils down to, to the claim that annotation should occupy a more prominent role in these space repositories specifically and, and also the Clarion infrastructure more generally. Uh, ideally, I think that uh, annotation should be presented as part of its own metadata field in every repository entry rather than being simply left to an arbitrary mention in this free text description. Uh, uh, what I've shown today is basically that the, the Lindat Clarion profile used by DSpace Corpora only defines one component and one element for annotation type, so for values like part of speech tagging and lemmatized. However, it was pointed out by a reviewer that it's quite unclear how valuable annotation type is in and of itself if the repository entry doesn't provide any additional information on things like the text it used or perhaps the uh, accuracy of the annotation or at least a reference to a place where this kind of information is accessible. Uh, so my suggestions therefore are the following. The, Lin the Linda Clarion profile should be revamped by, by defining additional components that are relevant to the complex annotation process so that it will be in line with profiles like resource info. And at the same time, Clarion DSpace should consider uh, implementing a field for depositors to input metadata on, on annotation during the submission process itself while the VLO should integrate a facet that's dedicated to annotation. This way, at least annotation type, which would be mapped from the relevant components, could be queried with the faceted search. Uh, however, this would be a sort of ideal best case scenario that might not really be trivially actionable, uh, given that it would entail basically a partial, partial restructuring of existing repositories. And I, I have here an alternative suggestion for the time being, which is that uh, basically repositories should at least adopt a consistent set of recommendations for describing an annotation even in, in part of the free text description. And such um, documentation should be done in as comprehensive a manner as possible so that what's documented is not only the basic annotation type but things like mode, text set, theoretical framework and annotation tool are also mentioned. Uh, and basically at last year's conference I've pre presented precisely such a set of recommendations uh, and they sort of zone in on the identified gaps in, ex in the existing provision of both an annotation as well as other metadata. Uh, and I believe that the cross-center adoption of such recommendation is also important given that basically post hoc curation of published, published resources requires a big investment from the perspective of repository admins. However, my operative keyword here is basically recommendations rather than necessary requirements for a deposit. This is because too many required metadata fields uh, in the submission form could also discourage potential depositors. And in addition to guiding the depositors, these recommendations could also be of help to basically repository admins in helping them evaluate the submission in progress, both from the perspective of the provided metadata and from its from the perspective of its qualitative documentation and basically to to conclude i'd also like to announce that we're organizing a clarin resource families event on the 10th of november at 1 p.m where i'll be discussing me and my colleagues will be discussing like uh, uh the potential adoption of these recommendations and also other curatorial things and i we've already uh invited uh, um, many of the repository administrators but if anyone would still like like to join you're warmly welcome perhaps just send me an email and this is it thank you yeah thanks very much i support your proposal uh, wholeheartedly uh, thank you
uh, but there is a problem. Uh, even if you do these proposals, the, da the data will still not be annotated for this uh, annotation information. And it is very often very difficult to uh, get the original metadata providers add this data simply because they made these in a project that is already long finished yeah. and they don't have money and people to, to work on it, maybe not even the experts anymore. I have always argued that Clarin should set up uh, a kind of metadata record for each record that is addressed with a number of uh, metadata elements that uh, they think are important for searching and this annotation uh, component could be one of them. Uh, and that Clarence should also reserve money to fill this, or they should invite the original providers to fill this, but they should also have an active role in doing it themselves, for example, in the context of the resource families, because it is otherwise impossible to get a good, uh, let's say, a high quality um, DLO with, with uh, the right facets so that people actually can find what they are looking for. Yes, I, uh, thank you. I completely agree. And uh, uh, so, yeah, my intention here is, I guess, more uh, looking towards the future than going backwards. But perhaps we, we could be a bit more proactive in trying to contact uh, the older admins, because yeah, the old many of the older resource uh, deposits, if they miss metadata. Uh, nothing gets changed. But on the other hand, I know that many of the uh, national representatives and the user involvement people uh, did get go back and they fixed a lot of stuff. So it, there was some progress there. And also, thank you for that. So yeah, thank, you. thank you. The last two questions, uh, and the last one is for me and uh, for myself. And just, just, yeah. um, hi, Jakob. Nice presentation, but I have to disagree on some points. I think that uh, we'll have to discuss it at the workshop. but. One point I would emphasize is that the metadata schema is not linked to the type of the repository. If you are unhappy with the schema that you got out of the box uh, in your Clarin DSpace installation, change it. Should, yeah. uh, that does not mean that the repository system has to be changed, as you said. No, it, it really doesn't. Um, another thing is, it's of course kind of complex on when I see these aspects, so we should also kind of agree on the, uh, you say, for instance, annotation mode. So there should be a list of annotation mode. It should not be a plain text field into which anybody writes anything, right? Uh, yeah, I guess uh, so, close vocabulary. So if, if, it is, if it is this case, then I would like to kind of re remind all of us that um, we've been around for about 15 years and we were still unable to agree on the requirement of the most basic metadata um, that all of us will use in the same manner. For instance, shall we use ISO code for language? The discussion has been going on for those 15 years. So um, I'm slightly skeptical about agreeing on something, something much more complex for relatively few resources. We have 2,200 resources in our repository. Manually annotated uh, corpora are a few dozens of those. So, so that's, that's the kind of issues that I think we'll be facing uh, yeah. looking for a compromise in this. Uh, I agree, and thank you very much. But uh, uh, can I answer with a question? So you basically disagree that, bas that uh, since I still think that most Clarion repositories are specifically corpus focused and not so much tools. So do you also disagree that Lindat shouldn't also add an annotation, well, facet or field? So, so I'm slightly confused about the usage of Lindat. Are you talking about our Clarin Center that is called Lindat? Oh, no, or no, no, about the, the metadata the, profile. The, the DSpace-based architecture, that does, uh, which doesn't have that in comparison to MetaShare. Uh, 